Kitchen. I'm your host, Audrey Mays, and today I'm sitting down with Lane Pierce. He's the reloading editor for Shooting Times Magazine, and he's going to take us step-by-step -step through reloading today. Are you excited? I'm excited, yes. <laughs> and, and apprehensive, but whatever the right word is. It's okay. Um, so, like I said before, Lane, I don't know much about reloading, so I'm very excited for this conversation, but what is some, you know, if I want to get into reloading, where should I start? Well, the best place to start, uh, truly, truly, is to find someone who is an avid shooter and that you would trust as a shooter, mm -hmm. okay, who also reloads. That mm -hmm. is the absolute best way to start is to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if you haven't got someone that fits that category, the next best place to start is to go into your gun shop and, mm -hmm. and that, that handles reloading stuff, okay, and buy two or three reloading manuals. Mm -hmm. They may cost you a hundred bucks. And by the time you read the reloading manuals, if you, you know, seriously look into it, mm -hmm. you'll decide, I've said this before, and I don't mean it negatively as it sounds, you'll decide whether you want to reload or just you need to stick with playing golf. Okay. I mean, it's <laughs> because when you reload, you're dealing with energetic equipment, energetic components, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can't make assumptions and you can't, well, I know better than that, or the lawyers kept the numbers low, I can reload what I want to load. Mm -hmm. Because you can have an accident and you can really have a, a problem. So mm -hmm. if, if you're not able to focus, um, if, you know, if you get distracted easily, if you don't think well, you mm -hmm. know, you have to have the right attitude to reload, okay? Mm -hmm. Because, or you won't, you know, you heard of the Darwin theory, you'll, you'll fit the Darwin theory one day and mm -hmm. maybe take somebody else with you and that's not really fun. Mm -hmm. So if you read the reloading manuals, it will lead you in the right direction. The Hodgdon has an online manual with online information with all the data you could ever imagine. Hornady has a manual. Spear has a manual. Sierra has a manual. There's all Lee has a manual. I mean, there's all kinds of sources to read about what it means to reload. The other thing that you can do uh, after you get past that point, if you said you really want to reload, okay, is you can subscribe to Shooting Times Magazine and read my column mm -hmm. or read other people's articles in you know, national shooting sports publications about reloading. And and there's nothing wrong with doing that for two or three months before you ever say, yeah, I think I can do this or whatever. Then you would pursue, how do I get the equipment, how I get started, so mm -hmm. and so and so. And you can start small. It's a whole lot better to start small. Right. Um, with most things. Single stage press. And I have to confess, I, I don't do shotguns. I have done some reloading for shotguns. I only own one shotgun, <laughs> so I stick pretty much with metallic rifle and pistol stuff. But I load for a hundred different cartridges, so I probably know a little bit about reloading. And I've been reloading for like 55 years, but I started when I was two. Mm -hmm. So when you were two years old? No, but I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to really tell you how old I was. There you go. To be. There you go. <laughs> but I have I have been loading for probably 55 plus years. Mm -hmm. So, so like and a I ton still of have, knowledge. I still have my fingers. Mm -hmm. I still can see out of both eyes. Mm -hmm. I can't hear too well. But, <laughs> but that's just the shooter's that's, life. That's the shooting part, right? Do you, um, you know, how many guns have you destroyed in your time? Never. 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 You oh, just no. follow the, the recipe. The, the most recent one that I tried to destroy, not purposely. Um, there was no loading data for the 30 Super Carry when I first started doing some reviews on the 30 Super Carry. And so I got, I, ex I experienced, let's see, what's the right word? Reloader's aggressive syndrome. <laughs> okay. And, and I pushed the pressures too high mm -hmm. and I was shooting the firearm and it quit at the range. It just locked up. And mm -hmm. I said, hmm, wonder what happened. And I took it apart and I found a primer inside the gun. So, oh my gosh. And there were empty cases on the gun tarp beside me and some of them were missing primers and so I kind of had the indication I was probably overloading these cartridges mm -hmm. but the gun survived that and I fired probably 600 rounds through that gun since then mm -hmm. and uh, some friends of mine did some pressure testing for me of my hand loads that were too hot and I was actually pushing 121 percent of the maximum average pressure I was running close to 60,000 psi in that cartridge wow. in that gun and it survived everything was fine so mm -hmm. I would not recommend doing that. Though. Right. That's a good call. So um, the different, you, you reload metallic cartridges mostly, so the different pieces of the puzzle, right? There's four parts. Yep. Okay. Three of those you can inspect when you're done. Okay. 
You can see if the primer's in properly, mm -hmm. right side up. You can see if it's been damaged or something. Uh, you can look at the cartridge case, which you should have already looked at long before you reloaded it to mm -hmm. see if there's any cracks, any damages, whatever. You always inspect the cases. And you can look at the bullet and say, and if it's sticking in the cartridge case, that means you got the right size bullet in the mouth of the case, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you get too small, they'll fall in. If they're too big, they'll, ma they'll mess the neck up, whatever. So it's real easy to do that. But in order to get the propellant right, you have to have the process controlled. Mm -hmm. You have to say, I'm going to load this powder. And then you check that about three times to make sure that this is, in fact, the truly the powder that you want to load. This is the powder that you have on the bench mm -hmm. and no other powder on the bench. There's no chance of getting the wrong powder in because you put two or three on the bench and forgot which one you were using and da 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 and then you go check the load manuals about three times mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm, I do want to load 54 grains of powder, 78, 28, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. okay? And then you can either throw powder in a powder measure or you can weigh powder on a scale. And either way is fine. If you're trying to load 5,000 rounds, you'll probably uh, need to be loading pistol rounds with something that'll flow through a meter real easy. If you're loading 20 rounds of hunting ammunition or something like that take the time to weigh each charge there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that you mm -hmm. get it for sure that you're right uh, but when you're done with the powder in there and you've seated the bullet um, you better have had the process under control in order to make sure you have 54 grains of 78 28 in the case behind a 130 grain bullet in a 270 winchester if that's the right load for it mm -hmm. and you know you're okay Make if, sure you follow the recipe. Follow the recipe. Follow your procedure. I never, I never seat a bullet in a cartridge without taking a little pin light mm -hmm. and looking in each cartridge that I've charged with powder. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they say, well, you can't do that with a progressive loader. And that's the reason why I rarely use a progressive loader to load anything. Mm -hmm. I don't have to shoot that much. So I can load it one at a time on a single stage press. Or a turret press work fine too. And that's what you recommend for beginners. For a beginner, absolutely. If you if you try to make a lot of powder fast, I mean a lot of cartridges fast, what you're gonna do is make a lot of bad cartridges fast. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's fair. I mean, you just that's all there is to it. So And so um after, you know, basically keep your station clean, keep your stuff organized. Yes. Um, you put it together. And then do you go and test these recipes out at the range? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you keep records. I mean, my background is an engineer. I graduated okay. school in 1970 from North Carolina State University in aerospace engineering. And if you did that in 1970 in aerospace, chances are you were going to try to work in the space program. Right. Because our president Kennedy said, we're going to land a man on the moon and bring him back before mm -hmm. the end of the decade. And they did that the year before. Before I graduated and after that I spent 37 years in the aerospace business working with NASA as a contractor I loved almost I loved almost every minute of it and a lot of the work that I worked on involved the pyrotechnics that were on the solid rocket booster mm -hmm. and so I was involved in propellants and explosives and so forth and so forth which was right down my alley I loved every minute of it um, I told this story several times before. In fact, Ron Robber, who used to work for Hodgton, we mm -hmm. were down at SHOT Show several, several years ago, and I was still employed uh, before I retired. And I invited Ron to go with me to over to the Cape and mm -hmm. look at a vehicle stacked on the MLP. And um, I got my, my thigh call friends got me in the place, and we walked around and looked at this, that, and the other. And as we were driving back over to Orlando, I said, I, I bet you Hodgson would like to have the propellant uh, contract to supply propellant for the solid rocket boosters. He said, really? I said, no, you couldn't do that because you don't make that kind of propellant that we use there. And I said, but the reason I thought you'd be interested in it was because the boosters burn for 123 seconds and the average consumption is 10,000 pounds of propellant per second. Mm -hmm. 10,000 pounds. I said, how much comes over from Australia when you get your powder in? And he said, that's pretty much a container of powder. I right. said, well, we burn a container every second. And it's two boosters, so we're burning two <laughs> containers per second. He was overwhelmed just about, I guess is the right word. Mm -hmm. So, But anyway, I worked on the shuttle program in the SRB side for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we were talking earlier, um, you are a huge fan of finding a person that you know and trust in the industry or in the reloading world to be your mentor. But if someone doesn't maybe have that, 
readily available, what is your advice to that person? Um, like I said, what the reloading manuals will tell you, mm-hmm. if you read them and you've not gone to sleep, okay, you know, <laughs> right. you can you can take up hand loading and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, not you're not a fan of YouTube. I'm not a fan of anybody telling you how smart they are on and, and that you can load hot this and mm-hmm. so forth. There's a lot of people that are like rowdy you know they mm-hmm. that's whatever so they get a little crazy they get you and it's easy to do that because you know my you know my daddy's bigger than your daddy you sure. know my, my gun shoots better than your gun and da 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 uh reloading is a one-on-one thing it's you know you have to remember this here's my safety rule mm-hmm. look in the mirror and that's who's your responsibility who's responsible for whether or not you have your fingers and your eyes uh-huh. and your guns not damaged and so forth you're it i mean who who's going to be snuggled up to that rifle action when you pull the trigger you who's going to be holding that 44 magnum when you pull the trigger you are so you need you need to be responsible you're yep. not going to be able to blame it on joe blow on a, on a on a youtube thing that says well he told me i could do that malarkey you know mm-hmm. and it's important to remember you know when you're reloading that when you pull the trigger that that reaction is happening right in front of your face. Right. Or at least with rifles, you know. Oh, with a pistol, it's happening for all practical purposes in front of your face, too, because right. it's going to come backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I've seen guns blown up at the range. I've had a friend of mine who was a reloader, and he made a mistake, and he could not recognize that. I mean, he didn't recognize he had made a mistake, but his dad pointed it out to him, mm-hmm. and it just scared him to death. I mean, I mean, I saw him blow up a 44 Magnum pistol on the range. Mm-hmm. The pieces, part. we found parts two or three days after we picked up the first parts. And I guess I've probably, I've probably only seen two or three incidents like that, but that was the most dramatic. Mm-hmm. So. And it's, we're not saying this to scare people, no. but it's important to be safe. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Because when you pull the trigger, it's done. I mean, whatever you were doing up to that point in time had better be correct or something's going to go. I mean, you're dealing with something that's operating at 35 to 60,000 PSI. So it's, that's not, it's not a toy. It's not a toy. Right. Like and I said, if you, if you can't be meticulous and cautious and so forth, you know, I don't, you need to just go play golf or yeah. something. You, know? you can pick a different hobby. Right, different hobby. <laughs> and can I ask you personally, why do you choose to reload? Well, I read Townsend Whelan's book a long time ago, and he had three reasons to reload. One, you save money. Mm-hmm. Two, you can make ammunition that's better than the factory ammunition. Mm-hmm. And then the third reason was that you can tailor the ammunition, whatever you want to do, to your rifle, which that's that's not really that's really the only one that still works. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna save any money. All you're gonna do is shoot more. Okay. Right. You're gonna buy more and shoot more. Mm-hmm. And that's not a bad thing. And you're gonna I load thousands of rounds of ammunition a year. And I've learned in the last fifty years, you're gonna have to work really hard mm-hmm. to make ammunition that's more accurate than standard factory ammunition they've come a long way and part of the reason why the factory folks have come a long way is because they discovered they needed to use premium products and the hand loaders have developed this that and the other the hand loaders i mean like federal cartridge company they they brought out a premium line several 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 years ago mm-hmm. and they started and they were using sierra bullets well they did load sierra bullets before the premium line they loaded the bullets they made right but Sierra made better bullets than mm-hmm. they did at the time. Today, that's not so. They make really good bullets today, Federal does. Mm-hmm. But they have been pushed by the reloading mar- handloader market right. that they have to perform. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to perform. And so it's, uh, it's, it's evolved. I just wrote a piece for the magazine. And the fourth reason that's really viable today is, is that I think everybody who shoots must reload or at least know how to reload mm-hmm. because in the political situation we're in today, it's even more imperative in order for you to be independent of someone telling you what you can or cannot do mm-hmm. to be able to make your own ammunition. Sure. So I think that's another a new a new reason that you should hand load is to be in control of your destiny as far as shooting is concerned. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a life skill, and um, I was just wondering if it makes does it make you feel more intimate like with your experience as a shooter? Um, I don't hunt a lot, mm-hmm. but I cannot imagine anyone feeling more proud of themselves when they shot 160 plus point white tail deer mm-hmm. with your own 270 WSM hand load that you made yourself that right? I made myself mm-hmm. and also no, I didn't do this I was teaching a young lady in our community 
I was doing an article on teaching someone new about reloading. Mm -hmm. And she was at the house, and I took a picture of her at the reloading bench and that kind of stuff. And she lo was loading 243 for a rifle that I had given to her recently. And uh, her husband, I guess Dustin was there anyway. Her husband was there, and he said something about, and this was before they actually got married. And I, she said, he said something about going hunting the next day. Mm -hmm. And so she said, can I go with you? And he said, sure, you can go with me. So she went with her rifle with hand loads that she had made that evening. And the next morning, about 10 o'clock, I got a text message with a picture, and she had killed a deer with her hand loads from the night before. So that made me feel almost as proud as the day I shot one with my hand load, because mm -hmm. she, she had taken taken an animal humanely, correctly, with the, with the hand load she had made at my shop the mm -hmm. night before, the afternoon before. I mean, there's there's something to be said about mentoring people in the space. Right. Absolutely. It, it's almost better to to watch them be successful than it is for Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. I mean, yes. And I've been, like I said, I've been loading for 50, 55 years, something like that. And it gives me pleasure to see other people enjoy this hobby. Mm -hmm. Alfredo Rico is one of our writers and photographers. And he... I used to aggravate him. I said, Alfredo, do you not reload? No, I don't reload, Lane. I don't have, you know, I don't have time taking pictures. I don't have time. So he called me one day. He said, you know, you've aggravated me enough about reloading that I've decided I'm going to take up reloading. And he is the most meticulous person mm. that I have ever run into. He's, he's worse than I am. <laughs> and if he has any question, any concern, anything, he calls and asks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not just me. He'll ask other people, too. But uh, he... He made a comment to me this on this trip. He said, I'm so glad I took up reloading. It's, it just can't explain to you how I enjoy it. Yep. And just the pursuit of understanding what's going on when you fire around. And he, he, he uh, uh, competes in, with a 6GT in precision rifle shooting. And so he has to make good stuff. Mm -hmm. And he has to know what he's doing. So. Right. Yeah. I think it makes you dive in a little deeper to the world that you're trying to explore. Absolutely. And uh, I wanted to hear a little bit, if you can, tell me about that, the, a project that you're really passionate about right now, about oh. your reloading project. <laughs> well, uh, every month I have to turn a column in to, uh, to satisfy the, my editor's responsibility to get a magazine out on time. Sure. And so, and new cartridges are fascinating to me. Um, six, what I'm working on right now is a six millimeter arc in a Ruger American Gen 2 rifle, bolt action rifle, whereas the cartridge was developed for uh, the AR platform. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've never, I've worked with several uh, AR cartridges. I mean, you have to if you've loaded for a hundred different cartridges, um, but uh, the ARC is, is very, very interesting. I mean, I'm just fascinated by how uh, companies can come up with cartridges that are so new and performed so well. In fact, I concluded pretty much that um, that cartridge in a bolt action rifle should supplant the 243 Winchester, but it never will because it's wow. that popular. But mm -hmm. it really performs really, really, really well. So um, I'm trying to think of another one that I, I wrote a. I, if it's odd, I like to do that also. <laughs> Uh, this, Oddball cartridges. Odd, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm doing something now on the 257 Roberts mm -hmm. for a Hodgson manual that's coming up. And for some reason, the people at Hodgson said, hey, we want you to do some uh, some load development with the heavy 25 caliber bullets mm -hmm. and uh, 130 grain, 135 grain bullets. And I looked, I caught, talking to them over the phone, I said, there's no 257 Roberts rifle that will shoot those heavy bullets because the rifles are typically with one in 10 twist and it won't stabilize that heavy a bullet, that long a bullet. I said, but we, we, we haven't lost the situation yet. I'll just make a rifle and chamber it in 257 <laughs> Ackley improved uh -huh. and put a seven twist barrel on it, okay? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I can shoot those heavy bullets. But to prove to myself, okay, that you couldn't shoot those heavy bullets in a regular 257 Roberts or in an Ackley improved. Uh, an Ackley improved chamber is a expanded chamber that'll hold more powder so you can shoot the weight, certain weight bullets heavy, uh, faster. Mm -hmm. I had one that was re had been rechambered a 257 Ackley and I went and loaded 135 grain bullet in it, and shot it at the range and at 50 yards, it was two inches low, two inches left, and went into the target at a 45 degree angle. So that'll happen. That demonstrated that it was totally unstable, wasn't mm -hmm. going to work. And since that time, my gunsmith now has a seven twist Lothar Walther barrel, 
at his shop with my rifle, and he should be, I hope, this week rechambering it to 257 Ackley and mounting <laughs> it on my st- on my action. So when I get back home, I can uh, start doing working on that project. You can finish it up. So yes. Well, that's exciting. In um, shooting Times Magazine, how does one subscribe? How does one figure it out? No problem. I mean, you just mm-hmm. go. On, you can go on the internet, look up Shooting Times, and they'll have the things, or go into your local. Uh, magazine, you know, bookstore, and they'll be on the magazine rack. You'll find them on the magazine rack. They have a card in there for you to sign up for. For you to subscribe oh, to? Oh, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for, you know, meeting with me today. I really appreciate it. Are you going to take up reloading now? Uh, I might have to. You're going to have to, you yes. Know? If you're going to play in this world, you got to reload, okay? <laughs> yeah, I might have to. Or I mean, I will start at already, the very beginning. Or do you already play golf? <laughs> I don't. Okay. <laughs> so Good. we're in the clear. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. Yep. I'm going to have to go out and buy my reloading manuals, though. And read them. And read them. If you don't go to sleep, you may be a reloader. Okay. There you go. All and right. that's that's the test, isn't it? So we'll see if I pass. But thank you for meeting with me today. And, I mean, if I have any reloading stuff, I might have to give you a call. I think you might need to call. That'll <laughs> okay. be fine. I appreciate it. Thank you, Audrey. But well, there you have it, guys. Remington is on the rise. Like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to share this podcast with your hunting or shooting buddies. If you have any questions for me or Lane Pierce, you can email us at podcast at remington.com. Thank you.